guys welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're here for the first time welcome my name is Martha and I'm here with another video so please feel free to subscribe and join the family also click the post notification bell so that you guys are the first to know each time I upload a new video so in today's video I'll be talking all things relationships now before you click out of this video and think I'm not in a relationship this is not a video I would love to watch trust me you'd want to watch till the end because whether you like it or not you are in a relationship one way or another and you're going to find out soon so yeah without wasting any time let's get right into this video so I'll start by defining a relationship a relationship is a connection between two or more people or things or a way in which two or more people or things are connected so I'm going to break it down into different types of relationships the first one is your relationship with God as an individual I feel you should have a personal relationship with God a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God who is God to you as an individual how do you relate to God or how do you relate with God for me I feel if you have a personal relationship with God then every other relationship that you are going to have will stem from that why do I say this I say this because we know that God is love and we love because God first loved us God loved us first by sending his only son to die for us on the cross he saw it fit for us to be saved from ourselves to be saved from our sin and even in our sinful nature God still loved us even in our sinful nature God still accepted us for who we for who we were with our flaws I think if you understand love from that perspective every other relationship of yours will stem from that relationship for every action we are answerable to God and not to man so I feel you should have a personal relationship with God and understand love from that perspective and every other relationship of ours I feel will flow like a river so number one have a personal relationship with God number two a personal relationship meaning relationship with self how do you relate to yourself or how do you relate with yourself how much do you love yourself so for a personal relationship i feel you can't give what you don't have if you don't have love within you you don't expect to give out love if you don't have good vibes within you you don't expect to give out good vibes you are what you give out so why do i say this you have to love yourself enough you know that even if people leave you friends might leave you but you know you still have yourself you have to have your back hundred percent no one will love you as much as you love yourself no one will be there for you as much as you are there for yourself I'm always saying this be your own person be your own cheerleader have your back apart from God and your family trust me you are all you have so you should learn to love yourself understand yourself accept yourself with your flaws because remember God loved us and accepted us for who we were with our flaws. Who are we not to love ourselves even with our flaws? Also, we should celebrate the small wins. It doesn't have to be a million dollar win. It can be something as little as, I don't know, like starting a business, running one kilometer, running two kilometers. It's just something. Pat yourself on the back. Don't be too hard on yourself. Learn to celebrate the small wins and also understand yourself. Get to know yourself better before you get to know other people better. Also, have good thoughts. Don't have distorted thoughts or distorted thinking because it starts from up here. Once your mental health is distorted, everything else is going to be distorted. Why do I say this? Mental health is very important. I'll give an example. Social media is very toxic. For me, there's a time I zoned out of social media for like should be four to five days i was off social media deliberately i didn't have money in my airtel money i didn't put money in my mobile money deliberately just to stay away from social media at first it's it started like just for a day like oh today i won't buy myself airtime i won't buy myself bundles and it went on day two day three day four and up to day five and trust me guys you do not miss anything social media is always there your followers are always there you will always find them the people you follow are always there you always find them and you catch up within hours within a day or some minutes you're going to catch up with what you thought you missed in one week or three days if you see if it looks like one week is too much for you you can try two days even one day is enough just zone out of social media take care of yourself you can do your nails you can do your hair you can do your makeup you can read a book 
visit some family and friends just something away from social media because social media can be toxic at times don't be deceived by photo quality just because you see someone post a good photo and you think everything is rosy there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes people will not post their problems that's one thing you should know people will not post being laid off work they will not post that their landlord is up on their neck and wanting rentals only giving them a few hours to evict people will not post their breakups people in short people don't post their problems and this is very true so just because you see someone post a good picture it doesn't mean everything is all rosy in their life and the members say what does this mean a house is admired by its roof you're passing by you see a nice house it's upstairs it's tiled like everything about that house is perfect and for you the first time the first thought that comes to your mind is ish these guys are living a lavish lifestyle i wish i was this person i wish i was that person and in the actual sense you don't know what's going on in that house step into that person's shoes and trust me you can't even live an hour or even a day in that person's life you'd want out there and then you'd say you know what like i'm out so let's not admire people's lives there's a reason we have the life that we have there's a reason we are in the family that that we are in it's good to to like be encouraged by what another person is doing but don't be so envious such that you want to be that person you want to live that person's life because you don't know what that person sacrificed for them to be there you don't know what things they did for them to have that lavish lifestyle it could be something good it could be something bad so let's just love ourselves the way we are let's love our bodies the bodies that we are in and let's work towards the people that we want to be as i said you can't give what you don't have so first work on yourself then you can go out there and flourish and be a light in other people's lives yeah so number two personal relationship make sure everything is okay up there because it starts with mental health make sure your mental health is on point make sure your physical health is on point make sure your spiritual being and everything else about you is on point the third one relationship with family members so i'll take you back a bit like undergrad i did sociology i'm a sociology major i majored in sociology it's my favorite course up to date i still love sociology i would take it any day of the week yeah so i majored in sociology and if you took sociology sociology 101 you remember that the family is the most important social institution in society you have the family at the top then the school or education religion economic institutions than the state or the government. Why do I say the family is the most important social institution in society? It's very important because the family has the power to either break you or make you. Breaking you. If you're in making you sorry, if you are brought up in a family of love, kindness, gratitude, good vibes, good language, trust trust me when you go out there when you start mingling with the church when you start mingling with your friends at school that's all you are going to give because you've known love all the six or seven years of your life before you start going out there but if you've been brought up in a life or in a home full of domestic violence vulgar language insults hatred negativity trust me that's all you are going to give out because growing up that's all you've known. For kids, they do not know what's right from wrong. It's you as the parent, it's you as the guardian, it's you as an auntie or an uncle, as a sibling, to tell them to say, Martha, you are not supposed to do this, you are supposed to do this. For kids, if they see mom doing something, mom is my role model, mom can't do anything wrong. So for the kids, it's everything is a green light. So it's up to us as parents, as siblings, as guardians, aunties and uncles to step in and tell this kid to say, no, you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that. Let me give an example. Someone is, has been brought up in a house full of love, kindness, gratitude, good vibes. That's like six or seven years of his life. The moment he steps into school or the moment he starts to mingle with friends at church, it's very difficult for that uh, goodness in him to be broken or, or to be taken away from him and the opposite is true for one who's been brought up in a family full of hatred vulgar lang language and negativity because if a person is made of 90 percent of the good yeah and they step out they go to church they go to school and this other 10 percent is the school the economic institutions and the state 
or the church trust me it's very difficult to break 90 percent of what has been um, imparted in this person so let's make sure that in raising these kids we are doing it the right way kids learn by unguided learning guys like they see mom doing something and the next time they are doing it at a party in front of guests and they're like i didn't teach my son or my daughter to do that you didn't but you did it indirectly through unguided learning so let's mind the things that we do in front of these kids let's mind what we say in front of these kids and also if we have a difference with our family, with our relatives, let's just make sure that we settle those differences. Because even the Bible says, do not go to bed angry. Make sure you sort out your differences before you go to bed. Because you might not know, you wake up the following morning and you just get a phone call to say, this person has died. And the previous day you had a huge fight and you didn't bother to settle or iron out your differences. What's going to happen next? You have these thoughts running through your mind. Oh my goodness, his soul, he or his or her soul not rest in peace because, you know, he died without, he died angry at me. And, you know, you wouldn't want such thoughts running through your mind. So let's just make sure we iron things out with our relatives whenever we have a difference. And also, let's not burn bridges.